This phone, yeah, it's old, like it's almost 8 years old by now. And yet, 8 years after its release, this Galaxy Note 8 is somehow running One UI 7 on Android 15. I mean, seriously, that shouldn't even be possible, right? Except, it is. This phone, along with the S8 and S8 Plus, is getting a fresh lease on life with software that should only be running on brand new devices. And technically, if this works, the S9, Note 9, and even the 10 series should be able to handle it too. But let's be real, Samsung was never going to support these phones for that long. Officially, they're stuck on Android 9. Now, if you clicked on this video, chances are you've already heard about this. This One UI 7 port that's been floating around and yeah, I just had to try it. So I did and now I'm about to show you exactly what it's like, what works, what totally doesn't and whether you should even bother. Now before you go flashing this left and right, hear me out. This ROM is tempting. It's smooth, it's packed with features, it actually makes this old hardware feel modern again. But, and this is a big but, it's got problems. Some are minor, some are massive, some will have you thinking, I can live with that. And others, well, they might just make you want to chuck the whole phone out the window. First, let's talk about what's actually great. Modern UI, check. New icons, widgets, notification toggles, everything looks fresh. You get that vertical app drawer, those smooth animations, a redesigned quick settings panel, and tons of customization options. Lock screen, clocks, widgets, colors, you name it. Even circle to search is here, and it works beautifully. Galaxy AI features, yep, a bunch of them made the cut, transcription for voice recordings, AI powered summaries in notes, even magic editor. It's wild seeing these software tricks running on a phone this old, and yeah, you've got those Android 15 stock features picked in too. Theft detection lock, AI wallpapers, and private space. Well, no, no private space for some reason. But hey, there's secure folder, except, yeah, that doesn't work here. Performance wise, surprisingly good enough. Battery life, not much worse than stock. Social media apps, no issues, all run just fine. Even one of my banking apps works, but you know, it's a hit or miss situation. But now, let's get real. The bugs? They're not just minor inconveniences, they're deal breakers. For starters, the camera? Completely dead. No stock app, no third party mods, nothing works. So if you rely on your phone for pictures, stop right here. This ROM isn't for you. Face unlock and iris scanning? Also gone. And since the camera is dead, the S Pen as a remote for the camera? Yeah, forget about it. The fingerprint sensor though? That actually does work. Then there's the weird stuff. Occasional Wi-Fi dropouts, random crashes. Some users report SD card and audio jack issues. On the Galaxy S8, the SIM card just straight up doesn't work. Meaning no calls, no texts. Kind of a big deal for, you know, a phone. And then there's this eerie green screen bug. Sometimes the display just freaks out. But weirdly, the moment you open the camera, which again doesn't work, it magically fixes itself, until it doesn't. Oh, and here's the kicker. The first time I logged into my Google account and started downloading apps, the whole phone just boot looped out of nowhere. You do everything right, it still happens. And the only way to fix it? A full factory reset from recovery. So yeah, would I install this? If this is your only phone, absolutely not. Don't do this to yourself, go live your life. But if you're that tech nerd who just lives for tinkering, if you understood half the jargon I just threw at you and you're still here, then fine, let's do this. But before we begin, make sure you follow the most crucial first step in this entire installation process. Without it, this might not work for you. And that step is subscribing to this channel. Here's how to install it. First, back up everything. This is not a drill. Your data will be wiped. Update your device to the latest available software version and make sure your phone is charged to at least 30%. Also, remember that you need to unlock the bootloader for this process. Start by going to settings, then about phone and find your build number. Tap on the build number seven times until you see a message confirming that you are now a developer. Once that is done, go into developer options 
and enable both OEM unlocking and USB debugging. After that, shut down your phone. Once the device is turned off, download everything you need. This includes the ROM file, the repartitioner file, Samsung USB drivers, which you'll need to install, Odin, and the TWRP recovery specific to your device. You will need to unlock the bootloader if you haven't already. After that, you will need to enter download mode. To do this, hold volume down Bixby and power simultaneously and just like that, you are in download mode. Once you have everything ready, launch Odin and check for a blue highlighted COM port. If you see it, you're good to go. Next, head to the options menu, disable auto restart, then click on AP and load the TWRP file you just downloaded. Hit start, let it process, and just like that, step one is complete. Now, to boot into recovery mode, hold down all the buttons. As soon as the phone shuts off, release volume down, but keep holding the others. When the Samsung logo flashes, release power and Bixby as well. At this point, you should be in TWRP. In TWRP, navigate to the wipe section, select format data, type yes, and reboot back into recovery. This ensures your PC properly recognizes the phone. Once that's done, copy the repartitioner file to your device. Then on your phone, go back to TWRP, tap install, and flash the repartitioner file. This will take a few minutes and then your phone will automatically reboot into TWRP again. If you check the logs, you may notice few red error messages, which you'll have to fix before proceeding any further. For that, simply go to wipe, then advanced wipe. Select the affected partitions, such as data or cache, change their file system to F2FS and format them. Just watch what I'm doing here and follow along. After that, confirm that your phone is visible on your PC. Now, transfer the ROM file to your phone's internal storage. Go to install, select the ROM file, and flash it. The installation process will begin immediately. After a few minutes, you will have One UI 7 running on your old Galaxy Note 8. How awesome is that? But before you start celebrating, remember, this isn't a daily driver ROM. It's cool, it's experimental, but it comes with its fair share of issues. If you love tinkering and don't mind a few bugs, go ahead and give it a shot. Let me know how it runs for you. Otherwise, maybe sit this one out. And now, I'll see you in the comments.